Oh, yeah. I didn't know we were on, uh, doing an online thing. Yes. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you got me on that one. I didn't know it would be immediate. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I love about, about creativity is the fact that, you know, sometimes I think that when, when we bring it to life, it's, it's even though it's in our moment of the, of the, you know, of the, of the situation, we, we still, you know, are thinking about those who are going to receive it. Uh, there's, there's some truth to that. Definitely. I mean, um, sometimes when you're creating uh, music, you'll have somebody in your head, um, that you think about that would really, Oh, I know so-and-so is going to really dig this. You know what I'm saying? A thrown stones there. You know, you're, you're, you're showing the world here. There's a message that needs to be lived out here. And, and while, and while we're doing it, let's raise some funds for people that are in Ukraine. Well, yeah, the, the you know what the lyrically, um, that was written by Joe Red Ice, uh, who you might know from uh, Trans Siberian Orchestra, and he was in the mm. suite and Dio Disciples. Um, and I also did an album with him uh, called Heaven and Earth. We we co wrote some things and uh, we were in a band together for a short while. But um, I sent him the track and and I and I said, Do your thing, man, you know, because he really likes to work autonomously and just do his own thing. Yeah. And he came back with this. Um, anti-war message and it was just before the uh, Ukraine was invaded by uh, Russia and it couldn't be more you know topical obviously and so when I went to make a video for it I wanted to incorporate some of that in it and so you'll see some elements of war footage in there and he couldn't be down here there's a destruction with all these tv screens and actually put him in the tv screen in the uh in the video so when you check out the video that's why he's not with the actual players um in the room um but we you know we've made the best of a of a, a situation there and, and yeah and 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 through running i have an event um some people are aware of and some people aren't it's called ultimate jam night that i started in 2015 um and i have 45 to i've had as many as 100 professional musicians wow. it was weekly but um we've we've actually did a show this year um to raise uh, awareness and funds for the world central kitchen f for the uh, for the refugees from uh, ukraine and um, we in fact had a family that just had their home bombed out mm in Pucha, and they they were relocated to los angeles so we invited them down and had them come on stage and the father talked and their little seven-year-old uh girls went up and sang we are the world oh my god oh my god see it that, was heavy. <laughs> that, that that's those moments that you hold on to forever and then that that leads to another inspiration and influence of, of more music ahead yeah, it, it was. There wasn't a dry eye in the house for that. Definitely, we had a couple Ukrainian performers as well there um, um, for that particular show. But that's that's how that all. And it all kind of together with uh, the song "Throwing Stones," which the message is: is how long will it take before we grow? I mean, we as humans on this planet, we started by throwing stones at each other, and now we're launching missiles at each other. You know, it's just when are we going to learn? It's 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 a you know we live in a very tenuous. Uh, you know, I'm I'm very stressed um, mm -hmm. daily just what's going on in the world right now and with this upcoming election and all this stuff going on. It's just um, it's a daily thing. I try not to think about it too much, but but it's like right there. It's very, what's going on. It's all very very important. It's going on in Iran everywhere. Well, yeah, and, and, and I love the way the musicians are stepping up, and, and, and because, I mean, they did back in the latter part of the 1960s, you know, those those yeah. songs and stuff like that were, were are still a major part of what we do today. Yeah, Four Dead in Ohio, you know, I yeah. grew up, I grew up and started discovering music in the late 60s, and actually when I was a little boy, was sitting on the hill in Griffith Park here um, in Los Angeles watching a Vietnam era riot with the police, and I saw, like, you know the hippies and all those people like throwing cans and the police charging and i was like it was like watching a remake you know like they do those historical civil war remakes mm -hmm. and you do it but it was a real battle was going on with and you know and i lived civil rights movement i i lived through and um yeah it's it's uh it feels it has that kind of feeling right now for me mm -hmm. Well, the, the lyrics inside the song, I think the, the where it really, really got my attention was, we are not the monsters. And, and I went, you're right. We, we are no. not. We are not the monsters. No. We're, you know what? It, we're not. And, and love is the answer. You know, if people could just, you know, step, step outside themselves and just and, and 
treat everybody the same. You know, it's like, I, anyway, I don't want to get on the whole, they, a lot of people say musicians should not get into politics and they, they slam Bono and, yeah. and people like that and Bruce Springsteen or whoever. Um, but you know what, we have a platform and, you know, I think it's important. I don't know if you're, if you got to see my video for my remake of Bjork's army of me, but, um, what I decided to do and, and, you know, that was a cover obviously and, uh, of her hit, uh, from 1995. Mm -hmm. And that was a track that I found that I did with my late friend, Pat Torpy from Mr. Big and, uh, my friend Lanny could Cordola, who's happens to be over in Pakistan right now, getting his girls out of Afghanistan. Wow. When that went down, he started a school, um, for young uh, women learning how to play music and guitar. And then that hope you saw what happened there. And yeah. it, anyway, he's, he, him and I and Pat got where we get together all the time and just record ideas. Or rec and, and we, we started talking about army of me and um, we, we started jamming on it. I'm not even playing the bass part, <laughs> the track, but you know, but I found that track and I go, man, this should be finished. And, I, you know what, when I went to make the video for it, it was right when Ruth Ginsburg um, passed away. Wow. And I decided to, I have a three animated army that are dressed like Antifa um, of Ruth Ginsburg's marching on, on Washington uh, because I believe there's still so many people that believe in her beliefs of human rights and women's rights. Mm -hmm. And you'll actually see at the end, there's a, uh, a woman's chest where she wrote, uh, my body, my choice. Um, and, you know, people are saying, oh, is that about mass? And no, no, it's about, you know, a, a human should have the rights over their own body. No right. government, in my opinion, no government can, should tell you what to do. I think you need to have advice from, from medical professionals or whatever and, and family and your, your, if you're a religious person, your, your priest or whoever, um, that, that's, in, that's important, but I don't think the government should get into, to, you know, our personal rights pretty soon, they're going to so take true. away contraceptives yep. and they're going to like, Oh, if you're gay, you can't, you know, what, you know how it's going to yep. go. Yep. It goes that way. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of worried about it. I, you know, I've actually spent most of the summer in Europe. I'm going, yeah, I can see myself living in Mallorca. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, you know what I, I tell people, I go, listen, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I belong to the common sense party. Yeah. If it, <laughs> That's the way I go. And I think somebody should run a campaign under that, you know, that a CSP is the name of, instead of GOP, CSP is your part. <laughs> I might go glom onto it. They might go, yeah, yeah. Because libertarian sounds too, you know, heady. Yeah. I, I think uh, something about this country, and I actually have a song that we did in the nineties called dumb it down. And that was even back then about how, I really feel like our country has been dumbed down with our educational system. And I mean, what are we like 26 or 28th in industrialized yep. um, nations for education? I mean, people graduate high school and they can't even put a sentence together, you know, as witness for witness from some of our speeches I've heard, <laughs> but uh, you know, especially recently with Herschel. Yeah. <laughs> oh that. yeah. How about that? Down anyway, there? I, I, I look at myself because I grew up, you know, I, I'm, you know, I grew up at uh, Kennedy was my, you know, I was, I was a little boy, obviously, but when Kennedy was assassinated, I grew up around that whole era mm -hmm. and we've changed so much. It's in it, not a good way, unfortunately, but, um, you know, of course there's things going on back then too, that, that weren't as publicized because now we have social media and everybody talks, but, um, you know, it's a double-edged sword, social media has has also become a, a big evil because it's really easy to disseminate uh bad information that actually costs people's lives That's i mean right. i i really believe truly believe that because the information about uh, uh about covid was held back when it first came out um and all that and held back and, and misinformation was out there i mean i saw quotes from people on their their deathbed saying, I wish I would have never listened to them. I wish I would have gotten the vaccine or whatever. Yeah. It, you know, and, and I really believe that. So social, social media can be a really evil thing. And the same thing with TV. I mean, you're allowed to, I mean, what was it? Fox, uh, they went to, they went to trial and then said, well, we're not really news. We're an entertainment. So we can say whatever we yep. want. Yeah. Yeah. Like, God, and all these people believe it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, again, I'm not 
I'm common sense. It just kind of just all fell together that way. And when I did this record, um, this album, I had no intentions of doing a solo record. I, I, I took a bad situation with the pandemic. I'm locked up. I go, hey, I'm going to start writing again and composing. Mm -hmm. In my past, um, I've been a main writer with the band House of Lords and yep. uh, it's QR3. I was a writer in every track. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to bring in keyboards with that. And we kind of changed the sound a little bit. And, um, but in throughout my career, if I'm in a band or in that kind of situation where I can collaborate songwriting, I'm, I'm in on it, you know. So, so w when I started this, I just go, I'm going to write songs, art for art's sake, so to speak. No particular agenda. Mm -hmm. So on the album, you're going to hear a lot of different styles. You're going to hear funk. You're going to hear progressive. You're going to hear jazz fusion. Um, I even have a song that's on, on there um, uh, called Cradle of the Sun Lorelei that's like a, a Robert Plant, Alison Krauss. Oh, wow. Type song. Um, I actually have a Celtic, full-on Celtic piece on there. Um, there's two covers on my album. The, the second cover is a song, which is the Celtic one, called Darkness, Darkness, and it's a song that came out in the late 60s by the young bloods jesse colin young and i've i've always loved that song it, it's something about it it really reached to me and i've always loved stuff when i pick up an acoustic guitar that's like one of the songs i'll just noodle around and start singing wow. i only did it but i wanted to do it full-on celtic with a fiddle and uh balalaika and and you know those kind of instruments and i have three drummers doing tribal drumming on it <laughs> and the singer nailed it is a, a guy named david victor who uh toured and played with the band boston who i'm sure everybody knows about mm -hmm. tom Schultz. he was in that band and and we had a band together years ago but he's a great great vocalist and and uh on the album i have a lot of different singers i mean i've sung myself on a lot of the albums i've done as a background singer but um i didn't want to diminish my own songs with right. me singing so i mean i could i could do a good job but i mean why not get the best you know that's, right. that's i've been very very blessed to have made so many friends over the years that are great musicians and through ultimate jam night i've had well over 2000 guests and a lot of them recur and i become close friends with them and um i discovered a singer named whitney ty who's on three of my songs um i, I approached her first about uh doing uh, army of me and then we became good friends and we we co-wrote one of the songs on the album and she sings on my newest single which is called giving up the ghost and I have a video out for that. I actually have four videos uh, from the album out, and people can find that. Just go to chuckwright.com, and that's right, like the Wright Brothers, W. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, I always wanted to fly. Not because of my name, but for some reason, I was always into the Air Force idea that music changed my total direction in life. After eight years in military school, second command of the battalion, I did my first gig playing a UCLA fraternity party, and... I got paid 75 bucks, drank beer, and the girl was <laughs> cute. And I decided, hey, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> and said, you know, join, go to the Air Force next. One of the things that in, in listening to your story and your journey is you are a craftsman when it comes to music. You, I mean, especially when you were talking about the three drummers with the tribal beat and stuff like that. I mean, you, it's not just putting together a song. You get in there and you craft that piece of art. Well, I, I, I definitely kind of went with a lot of the music on the record for a cinematic mm -hmm. feel and i know people have, have told me that the album itself feels like a concept record um and and even with it being so diverse it still all makes sense it's like telling a story but the story's kind of vague and um but there's a there's a lot of uh depth and there's a lot of uh, you know i hate to say sadness in it but but there's some darker elements lyrically and musically moody but there's also a lot of hope in it and that's why um my good friend glenn wexler who um is a world-renowned um photographer and illustrator and all that he's done van halen and yes rush he you know i'm a graphic designer so it, it, i figure i'm just gonna do my own thing and i came up with ideas and then he reached out to me and said hey listen man i love your because i've been sending him tracks as i'm building we're <laughs> super best friends and he goes, hey, I'd love to do your album cover. I've got a great idea. So he sent me some ideas, and we settled on this last idea, which is a vulture leaving the desolation of a desert as an eclipse is finishing. So oh my God. vultures traditionally represent death, and we're coming out of pandemic, and the vulture's flying away. <laughs> the eclipse is over. So it's a, it's a even though it has a kind of a dark characteristic to it, it's 
definitely about hope wow. uh, and about the future. Wow. So how do people find out more about with, with you raising funds and stuff like that for those in Ukraine and the, and the projects that you're doing? Because, I mean, you're, you're very actively involved. It's, it's not just a musician that's sitting on a bus. I mean, you, you're really involved. <laughs> yeah, I hate being on a bus. I'm actually – I like uh, doing my uh, flyouts. Um, and, and this whole summer I've just been going to Europe doing – playing with the legends of classic rock, which are, are guys from different different bands like Ozzy Osbourne yeah. and White and White Lion. And, and we have a thing that we do, but we've been all over. And it's, it's nice not being on a tour bus. Um, but no, you know, as far as what you can do, um, the World Central Kitchen, I have found, really is a place where they'll make sure that, that, that the money is spent on feeding the refugees coming out of out of uh ukraine and they, they have place and also they're all over the world but a lot of their concentration right now is for ukraine uh to help those people um uh, you know other than that just you know uh just vote for the, <laughs> for someone that's going to help that's right <laughs> <laughs> so vote true. For people aren't going to take away your rights that's all i can say take you know vote for people that aren't going to ban books oh. and and I mean, I, I, I just hope to God we don't become Gilead in, in Handmaid's Tale, you know, because it, all arrows are pointing that way. <laughs> So true. So true. I mean, what and what I wanted to also say is that I mean, you you have metal here that has content and purpose. That to me is there. I mean, there, that that's moving forward. That's moving not just yourself, but 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 a generation forward. Well, you know, it's I guess it's forward thinking. The record I forward just would thinking. like to point out. You said metal. It's really not a metal record at all it's it's so not you know i know a lot of people probably know me from from alice cooper right. or or quiet riot or you know i did a ted nugent record or greg allman or all these different people i've worked with through the years that are more towards rock but but it's not i mean i was in a flamenco band for two years i oh, produced a couple of gay records i mean i i'm as wide as you can get musically and i think that's reflected on this album so I know a lot of a lot of my ends with interviews and things like that have been, oh, he's this rock guy and yeah. all that. And yeah. I'm kind of trying to dispel that about about me as a musician and as a person. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, do what I can. I mean, my show, my show in Ultimate Jam Night was started because DJs were taking over L.A and our music scene was disappearing. And I decided, you know what, we really need a place where music musicians can socialize and meet. And I've watched some young players grow from a busker. There's one guy, Derek Day, who was a busker that we saw on Santa Monica and we brought him in. He's been playing, he gets discovered. He just sang lead in front of Dave Grohl and the Motley oh Crew guy. My God. You know, I mean, it's, and, and that's, a, that's my reward. I do not charge a dime for people to come see this show. I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, it, it has cost me money sometimes. We did have a sponsor, um, but they stopped doing uh, local promotions, which was Monster. They stopped doing that. And wow. so it cost me money. We've cut back on it. And we're, we have one more coming up December 6th, which we're going to celebrate all the guitar heroes like Eddie Van Halen and Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan, <laughs> people like that. Um, so I'll, I'll try to round up all the best guitar players. And then we'll, be, we'll think about how we're going to deal with it next year. But I try to do what I can. I mean... Yeah, I you know I, I've never like for me this album I want to be my legacy, not something I did in, in 1983. Yeah, that became a number one album and all that, but that's not what I'm about. Yep. I'm about how this album speaks to you. So, so I think people, you know, it's all I care about is people listen. I'm not trying to make money on this thing. That 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 the whole revenue stream for artists is selling product it's now become a promotional item for people to go out on tour pretty much right. but it, which i i can't do because i need roger waters budget to go tour this thing <laughs> you know when you listen to it i you know i have 41 guests on my album God. and the, you know, friends and most of them are from bands you would know like tesla and asia and and dream theater and on and on and on but but uh there, to pull this off i would definitely want it to be immersive like like speaking of roger waters like that kind of mm -hmm. pink and immersive experience and and with a lot of musicians and singers to to pull it off properly so i that's not really in the cards for this but that's pretty much what you now a record is a promotional item for your tour that's it you know 
I, I basically just, you know, you can go here for free. Spotify, YouTube has all the songs. I have four videos up um, that I produced and directed a couple of them. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I work, you'll hear the, some of the production's great. I use different engineers, but there's a guy named Tim Jansen's who's an award-winning film composer, who's an amazing engineer as well. Um, he he co-produced a few songs with me, and which lends itself to the depth. He'll say, hey, listen to all the different parts I added to this. They go, holy crap. And <laughs> they're so subtle, but they add so much depth to the uh, to the record, you know? Wow. Dude, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. Chuck, you've got one hell of a story, and man, it it, 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 it can't stop on just one day. I mean, if, if Joe oh, Elliott can come talk to me nine times, so can you. Yeah, you know, at 30 minutes uh, to cover... What have I, how have I long I've been doing this? 40 years, I think. You see like what that. I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, and I've worked with a lot of iconic people, and I'm constantly be, being told you, when I tell my little stories, oh, yeah, I went and auditioned for Sam Hager when I was 18, or, <laughs> or you know, Gene Simmons can balance stuff on his face, or all these different stories I have. They go, you know what? You should, why don't you write a book? <laughs> and, right. uh, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about it, and, and there's a lot of stories to tell. Uh, it might involve throwing a few people under the bus, which I'm not real big doing, but I think that's people want to hear that stuff. They want to know about what really is going on. Um, and if you want to know what was really going on with Quiet Riot, we had we had a a, a, um, a documentary that was to only air for a couple of weeks on Showtime, but they aired it for two years because it was so popular. And that really shows, you know, all the warts and everything about being in a band and, and us losing Kevin yep. when he passed and then trying to get it back going. I think people might find that pretty interesting. Oh, we'll never, there's no way back. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, a book might be in my future. You know, I mean, I, there's a bunch of other people I've tried to say, hey, you should write a book, make it, you know, and encourage them to do that just so people can really get the depth behind, you know, these, these stories are forgotten about. If I sit in a circle of my peers, I hear, you know, they, they'll start telling their stories, which trigger the brain cells come alive Oh yeah, that reminds me. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Come up with these great stories. It's, somebody should do a program uh, where you just sit in the round with guys from the '80s mm-hmm. and talk about the days and the different crazy stuff that happened, the Spinal Tap moments, the the craziness with the ladies, the craziness with you know the shows, things that have happened on stage, off stage, you know, on the bus, in the hotels, on top of the bus, wherever. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think that would be an interesting program. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Man, come back to this show anytime. The door is going to be open for you, Chuck. Hey, really nice talking to you, Arrow. Thank you so much for having me on. Will you be brilliant today, okay? I just want to say one thing. Yes, sir. The name, the name of the album is Chuck Wright's Sheltering Sky. Yes. It's not Wright, a solo album. It's called Chuck Wright's Sheltering Sky because I have so many friends on it, and it's really a, a, a project-type album with a bunch of great musicians. I'm just the guy run, you know, steering the boat. Yeah, anyway. But, yeah, but your vision though, your vision though, look at look what you did. You created a united collection of artists that have come together as one. I mean, I mean you you brought them all together. Well, I, yeah, that's true. And to my ult- uh, ultimate surprise, I I woke up to the news that I'm being considered for a Grammy for the album. How about that? And, and um I uh r- when the record first came out, I found out that I won best instrumental and best um video for uh, weight of silence which is the opening track uh, at the rock music alliance awards and and um tony k from yes presented the award oh i didn't nominate i was up against joe satriani and john five and one so i you know it's it's it, just create art that's all i can tell people don't try <laughs> overthink it uh, and try to be like anybody just do your thing man that's if it. you're out there writing just do your thing that's it. Oh my God, that's that's a perfect way to put. Just kind of wrap it up. There's your crescendo right there, man. Just do your thing. Just do your thing. <laughs> no. You you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Okay, you too. Enjoy your day.